let's come to order. Uh, and Mary Lynn is here, so we have a super quorum. Um, <coughs> and some new faces, do you want to do some introductions? Yeah, yeah uh, most so definitely. Hands, I'm sorry. We, have, we have only one guest, um, but a distinguished guest. Uh, hi, Matthew. Hey. <laughs> sorry. I'm quite all right. Um, but uh, I, I, that's a great idea, Kat. Um, shall we... Matthew, why don't you start it off, actually, in the introductions? Uh, I'm Matthew DeGroote. I'm a current Washington Central and Doty school board member for a few more days, I guess. And uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm just great. Thanks. Gilly? Gilly, if you were the incoming principal at Doty, and uh, I'm working on opening doors with my hand, what's going on? Fantastic. <laughs> as long as it's not picking up rocks and looking what's under that. <laughs> but welcome. We're really happy that you're here. Stephen Hope, I'm Stephen Dell Jr. Principal of U32. Mary Lynn Strachan, board member of the Jody Emerson, associate principal at U32. John L. Polskamp, board member from Worcester. Jen Miller Arsenal, curriculum director. Aaron Blunton, Berlin principal. Jonas Ito Van Fleet, board member from Worcester. Scott Thompson from Callis. Florida Fia Smith from East Montville. George Gross from Berlin. Kelly Bushy, Director of Student Services. Kat Fair, Principal at Callis. Alicia Langford, Principal at East Montville, and Vera Frazier in Berlin. Laura Depot, the Business Administrator. David Delport from the Temple Arts. And honorary. <laughs> 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 Bill Dice, uh, Director of Special Services and uh, Assistant Principal, U32. And video by Jerome. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, now, uh, one comment before we get into the uh, agenda revisions, if there are any. Uh, actually, I think there may be one. But as you can see, we continue to experiment with you know, just the how we, how we do this, and um, the last time, I just wanted to see what it would be like if we didn't have like, a block of administrators on one side and, and a block of board members on the other, but rather just sort of interspersed ourselves amongst each other. And just, you know, however you think it, if it works or it doesn't work, um, I, I'd be very interested to know. You know, some may, I, I would expect a range of opinion anyway, but um, it, it would be good just to hear. So, uh, agenda revisions. I think um, Lori volunteered to just give an update on the, um, the, the debt document that we had postponed from our last meeting. Um, and we could do that Maybe after a budget update, 3.2. Um, any board comments, board member comments? Nothing uh, at the moment. I'm sure there will be <laughs> as we continue. Um, public comments and correspondence. Matthew, because of your presence, you have right of first expression. I just came to listen. <coughs> Thank you for coming, actually. Really happy to see you. Um, <coughs> there have been a number, actually, there have been a lot of public comments during the course of the whole budget um, vote preparation. And those have uh, essentially been resolved by the budget vote. Um, there are a number of others that I've received that I've shared with board members uh, that are by way of future agenda items. Um, one relates to um, the, the solar presentation, um, net metering that we had at, at the U32 board meeting um, on the 17th, was it? Um, whenever it was. Yeah, yeah sure. 17th. Okay. Um, the other uh, has to do with Central Vermont Fiber, which uh, is in a sort of still a kind of embryonic state, but would like eventually for um, schools to be anchor subscribers to their fiber 
to the fiber network that they envision um, building over the course of who knows how long. So all of this is just to kind of put it on our radar, basically. Um, there is also a, uh, I think, a, a very, um, very thoughtful, and um, I think useful <coughs> set of observations and comments from Corinne Stridesberg on the whole question of communication. Um, I think even though communication is here um, on the discussion agenda 3.4, we're not going to deal with that now. Consulting with um, some of the people over across the way, it seemed best to wait for Deborah's arrival, to um, because a lot of it is fairly detailed, fairly operational, and it would just seem to be like spinning our wheels if we were to try to do that before there's um, we have an executive who is here to actually implement it. So, um, any other public comments, correspondence? want to say that I'm pretty excited that the budget passed, and I think we should take just like one minute, and I know that it might not be, I, I know how divided we were on, on this issue, but I just want to say thank you to all the board members that are leading now, and honor their work and the administrators that, you know, that this little this bump in the road has happened, and that we are being prepared to open schools. In the fall, and that, you know, that just that little, maybe not a big tear, but you know, and that there is no, you know, I'm not, I don't mean this for, you know, I, I no, know I some people's taxes understand. are going up, and we'll continue to work on that, and you know, and say that because I'm happy that some people are coming. I'm happy because we did our job, and we're going to be able to open schools and have no, big checks. So I think that's really important. Thank so you. thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Indeed, I, I, I totally second that. Thanks to everybody who's part of this. Um, and also to the public who, who you know, got into it and, and really debated very vigorously, and I think very healthily. And it was um, the sort of thing that uh, at least warms my heart and, and makes, makes it look as though you know, democracy is still very much alive. And, um, and that's a good thing, yeah. So, um, thank you, Flora. Consent agenda. We have minutes from the 12th and the 18th. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? Vera moves. Any second? I'll second it. Flora seconds. Thanks. Um, what do you think? How do they look? If I might sort of um, say one thing, Lisa, I, I just have to, I don't know how you do it, um, how you actually make something that looks as though it was logical and, and kind of um, cogent and coherent and flowing out of, out of, you know, sort of joyful noise that we produce. Um, but it's great. Well done. Any comments? I did notice I have Bill Dice listed twice on the 12th, so I already fixed that. Oh, good. Thanks. I have not noticed that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anything else? There's a lot here, but I think it's been. Um, it's been rendered quite, quite well. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, ready for a vote then. All in favor of the amendments, uh, uh, rather, of approving the minutes of June 12th and June 18th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. None opposed. Okay, great. And we still have no board order, so that's still just a placeholder. All right, now, discussion agenda, budget update. 
Roy, do you mind if I, uh, would you want to compress budget update and, and the, the debt okay. thing together? Run together, sure. Um, so I think you're aware that the budget um, had successful passage yesterday. It was in the paper, day to day. And um, I don't know if you want me to go through any of that or just to say that it passed in all towns except one. Mm -hmm. um, and having said that, all the articles passed. So all the amendments. Yeah. You know, I feel nervous. So I think it was made me sleep good last night. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time since when? <laughs> Maybe January. <laughs> um, and um, so what that means is um, the board on June um, 12th authorized um, having a revenue anticipation note, which is to replace the line of credit once we've passed the 30-day period for a possible repo. And so I brought the loan docs tonight and I've been meeting with everyone individually. So I just need George and Mary Lynn to sign these documents. So that's um, where we will, I call it the money maker because we will actually invest uh, the money at a higher rate than what we're borrowing it at. And we do this annually, so it might seem a little weird this year because we did short-term loan, which is kicking in on Monday, mm -hmm. and then this long-term loan will kick in on uh, July 26th. And uh, may I ask how the, how the closing of the present fiscal year and the preparations for opening next fiscal year are going? Okay. Um, yes. I have gone out and trained every admin assistant on how the new system uh, works. It's one entity for all admin assistants. So it's a little different than what they're used to because each school used to have their own system and their own entity. It's the same software, the same process. What's a little different is we've designed some custom reports so that buildings can get reports just for their building. Each person only has securities for their building. They cannot try to charge something to another school, even if they want to. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> and. Um, that's up and running, going well. We've tested it. All the purchase orders that we could load in are in. Um, as far as payment of employees go, we've been testing that for a couple months. And we've been running a dual system where all the contracts went into the new entity and the old entities. And everything is perfect. On Monday, we're going to actually um, move money um, from the close down of the old entities into the new bank accounts. Um, this week, we got all the new bank accounts set up. Um, we're working Monday on confirming that um, we have a deposit system where you can physically not go to the bank but scan the checks in. So that is up and running and we're going to test that out again on Monday. And Heather and all the admin assistants have been amazing at each school closing down. This has been the best close I've ever had. So honestly, the earliest I've ever closed the year was July 6th. This year I think I'm going to be closed Monday morning. Wow. Um, so I'm only waiting for interest income <laughs> from the weekend. <laughs> Other than that, all the purchase orders are closed. Everything's ready to go. I'm feeling very comfortable and confident. Um, we are going to test all the payroll by Wednesday of next week to make sure that all of the payroll's up and running for contractual people and that with all the changes, there's no glitches in the system. Because mm -hmm. payday is really July 12th. Um, but we may even move it up a little bit if we feel comfortable doing that. Yeah. People have had to go three weeks without a check, so we're testing it, and I think I'm feeling very comfortable. We've got all the resources, all the programmers are on standby. <laughs> we're ready to go. That's great. <laughs> Did I give you more than you bargained for? No, no, no. no. Okay. It's, it's really, um, this is where we still have work to do is um, all of the fixed assets were um, transferred over to the new entity. Uh, but that was before we just purchased close to 300 Chromebooks. So those are getting loaded in the old entities and getting transferred into the fixed asset system in the new entity by the computer programmer um, in July. Um, we also haven't finished setting up our billing system that's in this software to bill for tuition students. Um, we just ran out of time. So that usually doesn't happen until September. So we've kind of triaged every step of the process for the deadline at hand. Um, I think that's covering all the systems, but I do want to make a big shout out to all the admin assistants. This is, they're the best. 
I think I've told each one they're my favorite, so don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. You got that? <laughs> they are. They really have. It's been amazing. So, um, yeah. That's it on that part. Um, do you want me to continue on about the debt? Um, if you would, please. But I, um, okay. Before you do, I just I, I think probably one of the most important features of creating confidence and a sense of you know, security with the new system is if the money keeps going where it's supposed to. And, um, and that's great. Much appreciated. So, and Jonas? Before you get into the debt, I just wanted to ask real quick when you talked about setting up the, the, the new system, right, where it's the same software, but it's all, all one entity, but they're only going to be able to pull reports from their building, right, the charge that they're building. Does that mean, that regarding the public comments that we heard on Monday, does that mean that we will be able to disaggregate all the costs and all the revenues or yes. by, by building? Okay. Yes. It is set up exactly as it was, it's just yeah. combined. Got it. Um, what was different was we were under an assessment model, and now we're under, I, I would call it, a more of a direct bill. Mm -hmm. So where before, um, if we had two shared employees and their benefits were in one entity and the other one had to pay them back, now we can just do it through a payroll allocation. So even in that case, you'd be able to say, right, if you have someone shooting sure. half and half. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of shared staff. Yeah, yeah. Rumney, Doty, Calisys, Montpelier. So it will save some time with intercompany billing. Okay. But ultimately, there's a code at the end. We had to create that this spring. So each building has their own uh, state required number. Got it. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, the other thing that it did involve, and I forgot to mention, in accounts payable is we had to mail out 2,000 letters to vendors to get their tax IDs and everything set up for the new um, company. So we've had some summer help in the office to help with that and get their, it's called the W-9 form completed. And so if you get anybody saying, why are you having us fill out a tax form? Because we used me for years. We put a letter with it, but some people didn't turn it over. And so <laughs> they didn't realize <laughs> that it was explaining what was going on. Great. Any other questions, though? I'm open to anything else. Okay. So at the last meeting, we um, heard a lot of concerns about the assumption of debt form that was sent to us to put in your packet. And so I did meet up with the bond bank the next day at the uh, business manager meeting and talked to um, Michael. And what he said was he was going to look into it. So in the meantime, we realized that the uh, court case um, is getting filed with the Vermont Supreme Court. I'm not sure if that has already happened. So in so. the interest of that, um, came to the conclusion that we should just write and get an extension. So we did. We wrote, Bill and I wrote, to get an extension for the execution of any documents or board actions regarding the assumption of debt for a newly formed school district. And I went on to say um, that we're using the default articles of agreement and we provided those to the bond bank. He said that would suffice in the interim. Um, and that um, we are requesting an extension um, until, because part, several of our towns are part of the group suing the state of Vermont and an appeal to the case is in the process of being filed with the Vermont Supreme Court and we request an extension until the Supreme Court rules on this matter. And we just felt like that was the most prudent um, course of action and if the document needs to be updated or edited, why act on it twice? So that's what we did. So we won't see it on the agenda until future date and I have received acknowledgement that both the bond bank and the community bank received our letter um, but neither one commented any further. Great. I did hear that every other merger had filled out that form mm -hmm. in the entire state. Okay. Yes. Um, well, we're unique yet again. That's okay. Um, so we got an extension. But it, it, sound, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like uh, well done. Yeah. Um, just to navigate a delicate issue. Um, anything else? That, that it, it's not going to, as far as you know, have any any practical effect? Not that I know of. Again, they've had the letter for since June 21st. Mm -hmm. So July 1st is next week. So yeah. if I get a letter of second request, I'll call and say, why did you tell me I had? <laughs> because I notified them. If, so yeah. I believe it's the articles of agreement will suffice yeah. for force mergers. By operation of law, yeah. Because it says that right, right in it, Article 5. 
Right. Um, any any questions? No. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Are we ready to move on then to three point two meeting protocols? Okay, um, as you can see, as I mentioned before, we continue to experiment. Bill uh, gave me, I think, good advice that we should try to settle on a pattern that we'll stick with by the beginning of school so that we're not you know, constantly feeling well, what's going to happen now and have that be a distraction when we're trying to just focus on um, the work that needs to be done. But, um, so it, it will be, as I mentioned before, it will be really great to hear back any, um, any of your observations or concerns or suggestions. Any will be welcome. Um, last meeting, Jonas raised the, the issue of the school advisory committees. And um, I think I think <coughs> it was not only very pertinent but very timely as well. <coughs> and it kind of, for me, if, if you don't mind my launching this um, and then stepping back so that um, the rest of you can kind of have a bash at it. Um, the school advisory committees were part of a of an entire. Kind of this concept of how maybe we could run. Um, the first element of that concept, and this sort of gelled for me last week when, um, when Floor and Matthew and I uh, were working on an issue that um, this is a good way to work, for me anyway. Um, I find it very congenial. Um, and Matthew is stepping away, uh, Godspeed. Um, but Jonas is, um, as secretary of the board, is the natural sort of third party in this. So in, in the supervisory union board, there was an, an executive committee. Um, Bill gave me more good advice, saying, think hard before you set up a formal committee because that commits you to all of the rigmarole that, that goes along with that. Um, Bill recommended that we try to do as much work in sort of informal and flexible configurations as, um, a, as you know, we can effectively manage to do. Um, I'm thinking the, the sort of this troika um, agenda setting troika of, of chair, vice chair, secretary could basically be like um, ultimately chair, future chair, chair after that in a um, <laughs> in a in a in an annual rotation, so that um, there is constant flow uh, into leadership positions, um, into and out of leadership positions on the board to um, kind of basically so that many people can, can be involved and can be part of, uh, can understand what, what goes on. Um, and uh, essentially I think it just raises the overall level of capacity of, um, of the board as a whole. So, um, the troika of um, past, present, and future, uh, so that I would propose as of next year that subject, of course, to the board's agreement um, as the prime condition, that Fleur be chair, Jonas become vice chair, and I would move to secretary as former chair, and then the three of us would be, again, sort of uh, an informal agenda setting um, or steering uh, group for, for the board. Um, 
Now, where the school advisory committees come in, um, Jonas uh, not only mentioned them in our last uh, meeting, I guess it was the, the 18th, no, the 12th, the 12th, sorry, but also on the night before the budget vote in a discussion over you know, concerns about budget development. Is it going to be, the, the, the sort of the, to frame it very briefly, what is the budget now in the MERS district going to be developed from sort of the top down? Is the board going to just say, we don't want to spend any more than $35 million. That's our instruction. The rest of you just sort of fight it out amongst yourselves. Or will there be um, board, potentially board and public involvement in the building of budgets at the, at the school level as well? A kind of, um, you know, echo of, of what used to be. It would not, the, the budget would not be formally done at the school level, of course, but it would be done in an, developed in an advisory capacity by the school advisory committees, which, and, and Jonas, um, please jump in, because I'm kind of pirating your idea at this point, but um, I'm thinking that each, the, 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 pair, the, the town representatives would be part of that, of their school's um, advisory committee, along with uh, members of the public that would be um, chosen, and, and that is the method of, cho of choosing them is um, to be determined. But they would be chosen ideally, not only for their personal qualifications, for their um, for a kind of well-roundedness as much as possible on those advisory committees, but also with an eye towards, you know, um, breeding ground for future board members, so that there is uh, again it's the idea of, of creating as much of a sort of flow um, of of talent and um, expansion of responsibilities and experiences for um, for board members and for members of the public alike um, to to just be able to squeeze as much value as possible out of this out of this group of people um, and and the communities that we're part of and who we represent. Um, so anyway, uh, I can always tell when I've talked like twice as long as I should have. So let me stop there and see if anybody has anything to to comment or Jonas. Well, I thought I thought your your comment about developing, right, developing talent, that's, that's not something that I've thought about, you know, mostly I've been thinking about how do we retain the benefit of the experience of people, that guy, who have been doing this for a long, long time, um, and certainly know a whole lot more about the building, know a whole lot more about what you know, that school needs than I do, um, keep, you know, maintaining access to that talent and that experience, but I also think, yeah, developing a new, a new set of a new set of people who can step in at some point, right, and, and, and keep this going. Um, there, yeah. there, there, there's also the consideration of maintaining local control and maintaining local input and participation at the grassroots level, which I think is clear to everybody is something that um, nobody wants to lose. That is a huge source of grief in this whole merge process. Um, so it would seem to serve a number of different a number of different ends. Yeah. Um. I, I agree with, you know, I, I think it would be good to have, you know, everybody know how to run a meeting. I, I really miss, I think that when we reorganize, it should be to everybody's desire of how we reorganize so we can establish that. I think that we're talking about many things kind of at the same time. So we started with meeting protocols. As the, as the title, which, you know, we can wait until our interim superintendent is here and we can decide how we want to operate. And I think what you were talking about now, it would be a great topic, which is one topic that we want to talk about in the retreat, 
where we think like how do we want to organize ourselves? And I've been pushing that, you know, becoming a, and that's part of what that talks about is how we can have learning different learning communities that inform the board and it's more collaborative. So it's similar to how the leadership team operates, and there is groups of three or groups of ten and includes the community. So it's more circular in some ways instead of linear as we've been doing it. So I totally agree, but I think it would take a little time for us to sit down at that, have that retreat and talk about that would be so I totally agree with you. And then uh, Jonas had asked a little bit about the community, the local community councils that we have talked about before. And I really, so it, those are a little bit different. We had, uh, what we left on that article was what we could basically get away with because we had a lot of language about what we wanted to do. So I'm, I'm happy to, to sort of update everybody that was not familiar with what we were talking about and what we had mm -hmm. before and I could just read it quickly because we got also some uh, guidance from a couple of lawyers on what we could do or not do and still uh, so the community councils that we wanted to do, uh, originally, of course, we wanted it for policy budget and hiring. And then when we got some input, it says that the Vermont law does not permit school boards to delegate its powers and duties to a school board-based council, including policy budget and hiring. But, however, what we were able to get away with was that a school board may have seek input from the school-based council on issues such as identifying student learning needs, establishing school-based goals, uh, providing input for budget and resource priorities, and providing feedback and district policies <coughs> and procedures. So it's basically advisory. And uh, we, we can decide how we want to do that, but we as a group have to decide what kind of communication we want to we have. Because separate from that would still be the community engagement. So four things that we came up that time was the school board may also direct students to take input from the school-based council on issues such as this was something that was a priority for a lot of people, principal hiring process, school and district communications, uh, learning initiatives, for example, efficiency-based learning to engage the community, and family and community engagement. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and with that engagement, we have talked about what kind of engagement we wanted. Because right now we've been mostly informational, so we come out and give information, but we have a real hard time doing that two-way. We haven't been able to establish that, so. So yes, to all you said in a yeah. different way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is. Um, so that's what we had, similar. what we had talked about, and we, uh, that's where that article came, came from, but we needed to have very uh, consistent guidelines of what we wanted so that we get back need and not make it more frustrating for right. our community <laughs> right. members. Right, exactly, which is, yeah. which is, I think, the reason why, um, you know, by actually making it a, a, a subcommittee or a committee of the board, it gives it a, a kind of a status and legitimacy and direct channel into the board's deliberations that would, I, I think, you know, Allow for not increasing frustration among the public. Yeah. But, but again, to be discussed. Um, so, for do I do I understand that the these local advisory councils they just they, they have no power, but they can do and advise up to the point of they can make recommendations to, to this board, which then can then accept them or, or not. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So but we have we, to decide. In, in, in the extreme case, a local advisory council could essentially put together a budget for that school, present it to the board, and then have the board review it? No. 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 It's, you know, we are the board. What are the, what are the low 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 But he's talking about just an advice. Yeah. I'm not talking about saying the here is the budget. Not, not saying this oh. is the yeah. not voting on the budget. Right. Just, they have no voting power. Right. Yeah, but up, but up to that voting power, we can essentially task them with whatever we want. Well, I, I think we have to be careful about what, of course, of course, of course. about what we're asking, right? Because we, you know, like if it's even hard for us as board members to really know what the students' needs are, for example. So, like, how do you know how do we make so? I think 
I'm thinking quickly, and I'm not the budget person. I can tell you how to design the building, but I'm not asking about the budget. But it, so having said that, I, I think that we wonder and put in, you know, they are in the community, so they I understand they, they understand the need, so they can say, you know, selfishly, oh, we want Spanish now that you have merch. How can we make that? Pop? You know, like sort of that, sort of the big, the big picture. Not I was in my mind. I was not seeing the community councils as you know doing the math. But again, we're the board, and we can decide how to how that would work. And originally, at least from my point of view, I saw that the community councils we have a really hard time keeping a viable PTNOs at our schools. And I think as we see the trauma and all of it, I, I saw the community councils are more like on the ground. <laughs> People at each school so that we can become more efficient in, um, in seeing the needs in our, in our community, like having, being more engaged in our community and um, sort of uh, more, like they, we could be helping with the facility, for example, keeping the gardens going. It, they can be like sort of the things that help uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of a volunteer platform in a way? So, sort of in a volunteer way, in a platform, like being able to have uh, people on call. There's different models around. The Boston has the Boston model, Chicago has another model. And, and then they are uh, in some ways elected, so it makes them more voted by the kids and voted by, by the teachers. So it's a little bit more official, and you can have people that are citizens or not citizens participate in that. So they are actually, they help, uh, you know, keep that communication uh, flowing. But I, I'm not an expert in either. It would have to be a conversation of how we, yeah. how we, how we make uh, that work. And in Massachusetts, they had made uh, uh, labs of how people, uh, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. So how, you know, little, little things like having parent groups at, at the beginning, um, sort of mentoring each other, you know, all with advice from the administrator, but uh, sort of more community oriented, you know, and not necessarily putting anybody on it responsible for them. But I know that principals at our building deal with other groups within the school to do to do things, you know, so make it a more sustainable model so that it doesn't matter who is in the Mm. Yeah. E even for just doing teacher appreciation day, you know, like like so that there's more of a system, so we don't go up and down. Sometimes we have great volunteers, and then they like disappear, and there's no just no way to keep it sustainable. Their kids yeah. graduate or whatever. And yeah, yeah. George, do you have any thoughts? I just <coughs> I'd like to look into it a little more, yeah. Um, yeah. just so that it's not something else that we put on administration to organize and advertise and. Um, I know um, just from like principals uh, doing a, 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 an advisory council for a, um, a new employee search, a teacher search of any kind. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one more thing on their plate. Um, so I'd really like to look into how we go about finding these groups of people um, and sustaining the groups of people. Right. Yeah. Um, I know that we struggle. Mm -hmm. um, we have the same little wagon wheel of families in Berlin um, that are doing everything, and when they move on, when their kids move on, it's going to be a uh, you know tough kind of school year. So yeah, yeah. So I'd like to look into you know how do they do in Boston? How do they go about with outreach? <coughs> yeah, I have a feeling all of this is sort of also spilling over into the next agenda item, which is retreat. But but uh, just to get started, you know, and, and so that when we go to the retreat, we're not starting off from you know. We're not starting cold, but have already had a chance to maybe do a, a quick review. I don't know, Chris, if you have. Um, In terms of like, community council or contact? Uh, yeah. Or communication? Was, uh, I mean, yeah, pretty much the, the idea sort of started off with the advisory, the advisory councils actually becoming uh, a board structure, a board committee. With um, two board members on them, and then you know members of the public, however many, uh, that would, because they have board membership and report to the board, 
they have um, more sort of standing to to contribute to the to the um, the work of the board that's authorized by by law. So you know th there's a range of possibilities from you know a, a PTNO type of thing to a, it seems to me that a board committee would be at the higher end of of um, you know power and influence. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> and, active, and voting. No, I, I, yeah. I think, you know, just to avoid the uh, frustration, I, um, a, a, just a non-voting council would have of, of doing all the work and then saying, oh, we don't vote. Um, I mean, that, I hear that, in, just that frustration about being involved, but, you know, not the, the ultimate, where, which is voting on something. So I think that I think would be very good to have board members as part of that council. Um, I was also, um, you know, I think I, I sent this out before, is um, it would be a good way for having board direct contact with communities as mm -hmm. well. And I wonder if mixing up um, board members from different towns going into That's, the different yeah. communities is kind of a cross-pollination of, of thought and, and interest. That uh, would be That's great. Would be a thinking. Yeah. 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 That, I, I think that should be part of the mix for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, oh, thanks. Good retreat. Yeah, retreat stuff. Information. Really? Do you do you have any sort of initial ideas or? Um, I guess I echo George's thoughts as far as um, the administration having another group or committee to kind of oversee or be part of meeting and helping and advising them, because I mean, I just looking from Berlin's perspective, somebody coming in. They're not going to know what what they're even starting with um, and working towards, as we don't really know what we want from them. Um, so I think the first year is going to be a learn as we go kind of type of what we want from this committee. Um, but I also am very hesitant to create too many committees. Um, I think we need to work collaboratively and collectively as a group this first year. Not to say I don't support it down the road, but I just, um, I want to be mindful of what we're going to do, what direction we want from them, and what we are going to do as a board. I mean, I know legally we have specific things we're responsible for, but I think there's other pieces that all of us have brought up over the past, you know, several meetings of things we would like to dive into that we haven't gotten a chance to do ourselves as a board. So. Um, I think if you have another group out there working on some other ideas, you get so many things going and they never get on the agenda either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. those are my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. Um, necessary to keep in mind. Um, I guess coming around the horn, Marilyn, what do you think? You made a really good point that I didn't really consider about um, I do think we need these advisory committees, but or advisory councils. The, the timing of them, I think, would have to be a, a discussion. I see the advisory councils as something different than our committees. So my daughter always tells me I spread myself way too thin, and I'm hearing myself say, I think we need these committee or councils, but we need separate board committees, I think. And I, I wonder if that's where they're crossing into the communities would work. That we are setting up committees kind of a, across the district to get the feedback, but then embedding these councils to give us feedback as well. I think establishing, it makes sense that us that are in our communities are our community point people. That's what I'm hearing from this, but then also the engagement of, of the communities is so important pretty soon, um, but I think we need to kind of look at this in phases. But from my perspective, I, I, I guess when I originally thought about these, I kind of see them as two separate things in coming together with us being the part that brings it all together. Thanks. Jaya? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm, I guess <coughs> curious what the principles would see if they would see this as a, a benefit 
um, for them to have like a, a closer parents that have children in the school, like being, they could connect with quicker, quickly, more quickly and easier than, um, I mean, because we're a large group, we're a little cumbersome, I think, in some ways. But, um, I mean, because that's, traditionally that's how it was, like just the, there's a local school boards that work directly with that principle. So, um, I kind of see it as, as a more. Yeah, um, oh. I, I think Matthew is, is proud of you right now. Um, for, and, and maybe, uh, I don't know if principals have anything um, that you might want to say, comment on, on this discussion and on the whole idea of, of how this board, as a board of 10, relates to your particular school. Um, and U32, as always, is, a, is a, in kind of a class by itself. But um, U32 would not be neglected in this scheme. So um, anyway. <coughs> I, this is kind of new, at least in my thinking, just hearing all of this tonight. But one thing um, that I was thinking about as I was listening to all of you is our our communities are in different places, you know, so we, ha we have our go-to people, like you were saying, George, that come and go. Um, they don't know all of you. You know, they know Floor, or Berlin knows you and Vera. Um, so I think it would be a great way to establish some relationships with the board, because right now you're kind of unknown to most, most of our people, so that sounds exciting to me. Great. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about is it, there are lots of folks um, in our community in Calais that I think are looking for opportunities, meaningful opportunities to engage with what is occurring in its school. And I think sometimes it feels a little bit like fluff when it's the PTNL or um, if they get an opportunity to support um, different little projects instead of having a, a chance to advise and and feel like they they're they're sharing a voice that has maybe not been heard. Um, so I love this idea of talking about it, um, and I think it's really important as Alicia was talking about making sure there's connections between you know Middlesex and Calais and not forgetting um, in Berlin and Worcester and not forgetting. Um, that there's a really different flavor to the families and community around the high school and middle school, and how to make sure that that is really a part of these conversations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, uh, as you listen to this, Stephen, do you have anything running through your head in particular? Or? Oh, well, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> that so, uh, so I, I mean, I think there's several things, and, and each of you has brought up a, a little point that, <coughs> that I think has to be considered. This is. Um, you know, as you're talking about the structure of the board and, and the way that you operate, you know, these are those levels of what involvement can we have outside of just this board. Um, and there are models for this. There are actually some really good models that are out there. Um, they usually center around larger organizations, larger school boards that have many, many more schools than we're going to deal with. Um, and so there are parental advisory councils, there are community advisory councils, there are uh, there are school advisory councils. You know, these are different models that are used, but they're also based upon the structure of budgeting that you might want to choose and how that you how how you as a board wants to go about that. And so, um, some of the models, the budgeting model drives which kind of council that you want. And so, um, you know, there there would be a thousand different suggestions around this, but uh, and there are consultants that will tell you you know what you want to hear. Um, but right, but there but there are some good models for how do we create a budgeting structure um, that kind of create you know first kind of levels the playing field in terms of how do we go about distributing money across multiple schools, um, but also then takes into account um, you know what are the additional needs of schools and populations and, and specific kids. When I think the board needs to figure out first what's your model for budgeting going to be, and, and let that drive a little bit of your um, decision about what kind of advisory you need for input into those budgets. 
um, because that's going to be a, the, I mean, budget's going to be the hard one. I mean, I, I, I can say that coming from, you know, a system that had 58 schools and a $430 million budget. And so uh, budgeting is the tough one um, because how do you do it with the fairness and equitability both being prime issues? Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so I, I think that there may be, that's good retreat material to talk about is, is how to do that. Yeah. I would say for one, the one caution that I have around around the whole thing is that the advocacy model will pit us against each other. Mm -hmm. And so if we if we get into a model where one school is advocating for something and another school is advocating for something I, and, and you're having to decide, that decision is gets really messy really quick because it's who's got the best argument, who's got the loudest voice, not necessarily who has the greatest need and who has the you know the, the most uh, resource to deal with that, um, and and that's good because it varies by our schools already. Um, we need to make sure that we don't go down that path because that pits administrator against administrator, board member against board member, and community against community, as we kind of saw in our budget vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but we got to get past that advocacy piece um, and and make sure that we have a really solid system for how we we uh, we take care of our expenses and we support our student work. That's great. Thank you. So I'll, I'll jump in because I, am, I don't know the previous model at all. And when I listen and, and what I hear around, it's because I sort of I feel a bit like an observer still, is that the, the newly formed board has to sort of spend some, you know, echoing what Vera said, the newly formed board has to spend some time, I think, together figuring out, because this is a new configuration for you guys, and how are you going to do things, and how are you going to take bits and pieces of the way you guys operated in your individual towns and, and bring them together into what is this new board, the initials of which I can't quite remember, but what, what is this new Don't. board? Don't. They have I, to I, I, change. Whatever. I, this new board, what is, it, what is it going to look like, sound like, feel like to be on this board? And then in terms of thinking about what you do sort of outside of the basic functioning of the board. I think there are two things to keep in mind. One is, you know, I'm usually influenced by Simon Sinek's work with Start With Why. And when you start with this fund of why do you want to, okay, the what is the community advisory committee? But why do you want to have the com community advisory committee? What is it that you're looking to get? And then if you start with the why, then you craft the what based on what the why is, because sometimes the what changes when you really consider what the why is. And then finally, just to echo what Stephen said, is this has been an interesting process for me to watch because I was working at Barry City and our merger was also um, contentious and then I'm a Middlesex community member and a budding Worcester administrator and I think really looking at, really being mindful of what Stephen was talking about Truly practicing equity um, is is hard. is very very hard, and you have to have a real commitment to it. And you do have to be really mindful that it doesn't look like maybe one year there are going to be some needs somewhere where Dodie might get a little bit more because that's what equity is about. It's about you put more resources into a place to to bring it up to a level playing field. But that doesn't mean that Dodie always gets the more resources. Maybe maybe then Berlin has some. Um, Need, but you can't have those really hard conversations until you guys have gelled as an organization, and we've all gelled as an organization. So those are my thoughts. Yeah, thanks very much. All right, we get to yeah. back clean up. Yeah. Well, and, and Jen and Kelly, um, for the sort of overview. Sure. Um, well, I feel what Steve said for sure about uh, looking at a model. One thing that I was thinking about was. Um, <coughs> This is a golden opportunity to perhaps become something that maybe we haven't been or pieces of what has been good. And I go back to, I guess, the why uh, and think about the vision of this new organization. And we have good vision, but um, to perhaps relook at why do we exist and more so what do we want to become. And you have a golden opportunity to decide what you want to become. And that perhaps could be something where community involvement through committees, you know, in terms of creating a vision, um, 
or an idea of what you want to, you want to be could really get people involved and get feel shared. So that's what a vision should be shared. Um, and then from there, and whatever kind of model uh, is, is chosen, um, you look at strategic planning and really think about um, what is what is needed. Ties um, in action planning. How does an action plan get us towards that 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 vision? And then are there then looking at a budget or budgeting? What kinds of things in the budget support that action plan that would ultimately support? That, that vision of what we want to become. So, um, if you know that is something that everyone agrees to want to, you know, move towards, um, that would be really cool in my opinion. Um, I definitely think like to not willy nilly things um, and to you know model, document, plan mm -hmm. very carefully, written. <laughs> Jen and, and Kelly, um, sort of for the, the, the grand view from, um, from the central perspective, if you, if you have any particular thoughts yeah. or concerns. I'm guessing I'm thinking about two things. I think, I think that foundational work, those conversations are fundamentally important. I think that, um, as Vera, you said, to rushing in, I think would do a disservice to everybody. So um, really having those conversations around values and equity and all of those pieces, I think, will serve us well. I think the other thing is, um, in my position, I already enjoy a pre-K through graduation lens. I see kids in all the buildings, as does Kelly. So I, I already think of them as all of our children, but I know a lot of people don't have that experience or perspective yet. And I think that as you're working to think about how to promote that idea that they are all our children, um, will also serve the community as well. Thanks. And yeah. Kelly, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add. A lot has been said. Yeah, well, I echo what most of what Jen said. And I think Stephen put some good ideas in there. I think Stephen also mentioned that the budget's going to be probably one of the hardest things we need to tackle. It's also one of the first things we're going to have to tackle. Yes. So I'm a little yeah. worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> So right, that is something that we jump right into early in the fall. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that, that's the only sort of timing constraint. Uh, not the only timing constraint, <laughs> but one of them. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of hard work to do between now and then. Mm -hmm. Quite right. <laughs> Your retreat's just growing. Oh, growing. Growing. this <laughs> retreat is turning into a lot of work. Okay. That's what it is. And, and Jody, I don't know, we haven't. Uh, I'm good. You good? <laughs> 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 Great. Thanks very much. Um, I don't know if do any board members have any oh, wait a minute. Bill. Oh yeah. Bill, my God. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a Matthew thing. Best idea I've ever heard. <laughs> and Lori? Um, budget's been probably my number one job for the last couple of years since so I'm ready to go. Yeah. I have the systems up and running, and I have them linked, and that was an investment I think that'll be well spent. Good. Excellent. So we can have separate but together. I mean, that model. Separate but together. Uh, that, that actually sounds a lot better than separate but equal. <laughs> yeah. But I keep thinking, when are you guys going to get to talk about students? I know. Yeah. We're, we are so sick of talking money. I, 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 I totally agree. Yeah. And um, we're... I guess we have to talk about money first, and then, and then once we get past the money, we can do all the fun stuff. But as you said earlier, the forums were um, an opportunity to hear yeah. um, from the community. We had quite a few people here. The first forum we had, I think, close to 25 in total. And the second forum we had 10 or 11. And yeah. I still think it was an opportunity for us to, to kind of figure things out. And there I know some... Jonas has a lot of ideas based on that, too. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was Welcome to see something new and have different questions. So yeah. I get excited when we talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just want to round back to what Gillian said about the why. Yeah. Right? And why, you know, why I think these things are important, um, which is what Jen said about we need to see all the kids as ours. 
this is still an environment where we are five towns, and I think part of the why needs to be getting to one municipality, right? That we have five different schools, five different elementary schools in one district, mm -hmm. right? That's gonna be really hard to do because there are, what, like 250 years now of history of these being separate individual towns that is not gonna go away. Um, but I think, you know, there, there are a lot of ideas, but I just wanted to mention that's part of what I think the why should be. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, having set that up so magnificently, everyone, thank you very much. We can now talk about the retreat, which I hope will just be uh, dates, right. Thank you, Laura. I have my own prompter here. <laughs> yeah, changing the dates. Um, would you like to take that? Right, so for the, for the first retreat, which doesn't include the leadership team, <coughs> uh, Deborah has, is her 37th anniversary on the date that we have picked, the 17th, that Wednesday, which is one of our normal meeting dates. So she was suggesting the 15th or the 16th. <coughs> that was possible for four members. So I don't know if you guys want to look at your calendar really quickly. What what are we looking at for the time? Is it like an are you guys talking about an all day? Just I, I, I think all day would just be too much. Okay. I think um, what we had said was for this particular one is it's either one evening or starting early in the afternoon. Okay. Doing Hours, yeah, um, that that would be my uh, my maximum. Um, yeah. Or we could just you know get the, it, it would be nice to have to break out of the sort of the normal framework, you know, sitting in this room or sitting in a library in an elementary school and be in a. Flo has a wonderful back porch, but we got in trouble the last time we did that, so <laughs> I guess. Because we didn't in the morning. And we could warn it. We could warn it. Come to Flora's back porch. <laughs> um, but Jana, did you have something? No. <clears throat> the sixteenth, you're saying? Uh, or 15, the fifteen? Fifteen or sixteen were two possible dates that she gave us. We could move it to the following week, but then we started like. And not a weekend. That's a weekend. Uh, we're. She wants to be part of it, and then can she, we bring if to support working work. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. the reason we have done it on a meeting day is that we reduce the time of the meeting because we were not going to have mm -hmm. meetings in July. So we could start at six thirty is a little late to start. Every, you know, for everybody to be in the frame of mind. I feel so if we could get started at five. So that we don't go, you know, and the idea was to maybe have it at the North Branch space. Oh, so that, mm -hmm. because we would need a projector. That's a good space. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. it's not that I don't want to have space. I could do this with the front. Yeah. <laughs> the 15th would be better for me, just better. because there's, I'm less likely to have a patient turn out me that day. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Is the 15th? Looking, um, yeah. and, and this, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Flora, the idea is for this to be really Deborah and board, primarily. And, and it's really um, that trying to coalesce amongst ourselves and with Deborah in the first instance. And then broaden, um, maybe have a, you know, a second. So we had picked a date for the second oh, one already. Though, right? August yeah. 1st and 12th for meeting August, with the leadership team. August 1st. As part of the August 1st yeah. 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 at 12. At 12. August 1st at 12. It yes. was the, that was the second part of the leadership team. Yeah. You guys all have to come help me weed. Yeah. And George. George will take a vacation from this bar. <laughs> So does that sound okay? And then that that re that that retreat again is just uh, roles and duties, basic orientation for all 
I thought that covered ethics, stuff about many protocols. So it's just the basic information plus getting to know you know, each other. So that's why we we're thinking that we don't need everybody because in July, so we want the leadership team to have a, a break. <laughs> So we're talking, we're just, just to be clear, we're talking about uh, essentially 5 to 8 p.m. on Monday the 15th? Correct. At North Branch. At North Branch. Yeah. And I just have to confirm that because I couldn't, you know, and I just have to confirm that. The dates, obviously for them, the dates in the evening are a little bit harder some, sometimes, but they had openings for both times. So and Thursday, August 1st, sort of noon to the afternoon. We didn't say what amount of time. Yeah. We didn't say what um, amount of time, but noon and we, I would, we would probably end three up. hours at the outside, at the outside, because the other, beyond that, it just, you know. And would that, would that be last, for last year? But here. last year, yeah, we could hear. It'd be here. Would here be, yeah. I was thinking it could be at this bit, just to keep us a different location, but if you guys are working here already, it could mm -hmm. be here. We're going to be here first. Where were you thinking? Where we had it last year? It is the business 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 offices. Business. Oh. Just to give well, us a different place. You know what I mean? Just to give us a different place, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I'd rather not have people travel if they don't need to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and they'll be already yeah, here. Yeah, that's true. Here's my question. Yeah. Here's the CC. Yeah. Good. So is that good? Yeah, that's great. All right. Great. On um, communication. I mentioned Curran Stradsburg, Strad, <coughs> Stradsburg's um, email and <coughs> the suggestions that she raised that we'll deal with later once Deborah is on board. But um, communications in terms of, for now, I mean, just thanking people for voting for, um, you know, whether or not they supported the budget, just for being involved and caring enough to show up and cast a ballot, and then also for the amendments to the articles. That was, um, I think, a, a decent outcome. So, yeah, OK. <laughs> um, one, one thing I, I wanted to yeah. ask about community, it's frustrating that Front Porch Forum seems to be a primary place where people do a lot of public communication and outreach, and yet I cannot see Berlin. I don't think Berlin can see Worcester. Yeah. Who do we talk to over there? about making sure that, that, that the, the people in these five towns can see the other five towns, so or at least the people with accounts. Yeah. You know, You're right. You're right. Yeah, they, uh, I'll talk to them. They have not seemed very flexible when I've spoken to them. Who's there 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 not to be. Yeah. Is there a block or something? Hmm? Is there a block in the place? Well, no, you're just allowed yeah, to see, like, like for some reason I can see Stowe, oh. because it's close to Worcester as the crow flies. But that's a different state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's mapping. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's mapping. Yeah. I see more Montpelier. Yeah. 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 Here's Pucko. <laughs> <laughs> they talked about us. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll ask you about that. Okay. Uh, any other communication questions or um, anybody is okay with that? I mean, is there anything that we anticipate needing to communicate? To the public for you know close to the start of school other than wanting these meetings? And nothing that I anticipate, in fact, if I'm not misreading the public mood, I think they would be happy if we didn't communicate with them, yeah. at least for a while. I think um, there's, there's been a lot of school business going on over the past six months. I would so. just echo something that Corinne put in her email that. Um, being consistent with wherever the meetings are going to be posted, that it's consistently posted, and that um, several Berlin members utilize the Berlin website rather than the WCUUSD website right now. So I, I strongly encourage us to make sure that our meetings are posted on all of our individual websites. Uh, the, the, the school meetings. websites. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll, I'll relay that also to Krista. Okay, that's communication. Mm, can I ask a question about that? By all means. Um, the first is the email you guys are talking about. I don't. Um, Corinne may not have, uh, it didn't have a header, so I don't know 
at least the version that I received didn't have a header. So I don't know who was actually uh, addressed, who the addressees or CCs were. But um, if you want, I can send you a copy. Do you mind? Of course. And then the second question, just until Casey comes. When is Casey coming? July 1st. Oh, okay, great. I wasn't sure if it was the 15th. Um, is it Krista that communicates out to the administrators, or is that Kate? Like, who would tell our administrative assistant to post on the Romney website? Krista. Krista creates the yeah. agendas and sends them to the admin assistants. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right, <clears throat> so 3.5, the VSBA resolutions. Hello? So I, I did, I'm sorry that it was not in the packet. I had sent it to Scott and we just didn't coordinate it. On, on, but everybody got an email even from the VSBA saying what a resolution is. And a resolution is basically guide, uh, guides the association in positions that they, that they take and just how they lobby at, you know, at the computer level or at the federal level. So the submission is due July 15, and I was thinking since we have been having a lot of conversations of things that we do not agree with the BSBA, this is a long time uh, year, and we're trying to change, just for your information, we're trying to change the, the timing of when we're asked for resolutions so that this changes you know, hopefully next year. So we're talking about this sooner rather than waiting until July because the resolution committee looks at the resolutions in the, also in the summer, and then you vote on them quickly in October. So that doesn't seem to be enough time for people to be able to give us enough input. But right now, I was thinking uh, that we could potentially, if people want to, have, uh, have two ideas or two possible resolutions uh, or guidance that we could send to them. One could be that we wanted to explore a fair way of adjusting property taxes uh, within a school district that takes into consideration this, the impact of like, school taxes in small uh, towns affected by uh, the Consolidated Fund 36, right? Because we, right now, that's one problem that we have. So that could be one guideline. Obviously, this doesn't mean that they immediately take action either. This gets voted by the membership and then voted again <coughs> at a regional meeting. And the other one could be that was also a common theme from a, a people coming to our meetings was that there, you know we would want something to help establish some guidelines to monitor a, meeting the goals of Act 46 and report efficiencies and cost benefits. It's something that I kept hearing oh, yeah, yeah. From, from, yeah. from them. So that could be just to, it doesn't, you know, we can, a, they, we have made a lot easier now in submitting resolutions because we don't have to not a lot, but we have several lawyers. We don't have to be lawyers to to write it down. So now it's just we're areas, so we could be very, uh, all we need is a contact person, which could be you. And then uh, and then if any of those two topics is something that we would want to do, and that's how, we part that's how I see we participate. Mm -hmm. Instead of like getting out of process, we're saying, you know, this is, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And even if at the end everybody says they want to leave, we have sent. A resolution. We're still members mm -hmm. until until September, and, and uh, even if it didn't get some of, especially some of the first one that I was reading, is is something that I know others have expressed. So the more that you get on the subject, mm -hmm. the more right. weight yeah. that it has. So I don't know if anybody else has. Any board members have anything to say? about Flores' presentation? Um, I, think, I, I think we should use the resolution process to uh, particularly uh, deal with the debt issue. Uh, yes, I think. that's, I think um, that that's sort of a good resolution part, part of how that's, that. although time, yeah, I, mean, I mean, you have, you know, I didn't say, I didn't language. say debt, you know, because well, I wanted it to be. Uh, but, you know, but the, yeah. I think it should say debt, okay. um, because that's where the inequity in the tax and uh, that's going to really come into play and most and prominently, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and what was the other thing? I I kept hearing about the they have a, yeah oh, the monitoring the efficiencies and because okay. yeah I think that's okay yeah I agree. Okay. Okay. to see that it's doing what was supposed to. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, we would have to take an action on the action agenda. 
today. then uh, both today because we don't meet again and this are due July 15th and, uh, uh, and we meet on the 23rd to you know organize right. them and send them to the bigger so membership Sorry, yes. Can we propose other resolutions or just those two? No, we can no, propose as many. In the past, we have sent resolutions for, like, that example, like A32 and it's not the dead one in gun control. You know, it didn't yep. go further because there was not enough support from the larger membership. But well, we actually meet on the 15th, right? Uh, so yeah, no. we meet on the 15th. Retreat. That's right. Oh, 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 you meet oh, before we, we were meeting changed. the 17th. 17th right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe we just take a few minutes before that I mean, if folks are interested in drafting resolutions we circulate it and then we wordsmith them at okay. the very first part of the retreat and do it that way you really know how to have a retreat Chris <laughs> <laughs> wow um, yeah, okay. but wait, wait, but okay, we don't we'll have, have here we don't, while right, we do it. After I say that, I, we don't want to have a retreat about this, right? And no, 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 no. Okay. Just <laughs> use that time together as together. a yeah. for just because. Okay. Because it would be very difficult, I think, to come up with you know, yeah. proper resolutions on the spot right here. Um, something that I would prefer to uh, try to avoid doing. Oh yeah, true. Um, yeah. <coughs> but if, if if we're collect, how we're, I would just assume. I mean, you're welcome to be the contact person for us since you're. Yeah. Since you're yeah, and that's uh, and that's okay as long as yeah. Um, Jael, do you have a resolution that you would like to? Well, it's interesting because I got an email today um, from Liz Filskov. I don't know who she is, mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> I helped pass the resolutions, the climate solutions resolutions, in all the towns except Berlin, um, and she was suggesting that the, that schools in the Vermont school board. Association or the schools in our district take up those resolutions those that were passed at the town to try. And so she was talking about like trying to come up with more environmentally friendly, climate friendly um, resolutions for the schools. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so she yeah. just. Yeah. Um, how about if we proceed like this? If, um, if anybody has a resolution that they want to suggest, mm -hmm. can maybe send it to you? Yes. Yeah. Sound good? Compile, Send yeah. it to Floor, and then Floor will work with some lawyers yeah. to write them down. Or, yeah. Yeah, I'll type them, but I'm not going to do the where areas. Or, and what, so that's what we're I, trying to avoid is more of just. Yeah. Would you mind, Chris? No, that would be yeah. great. Yeah. That would be terrific. Thank you. Oh, and, and um, let's see. Do that by, um, we would we circulate those resolutions that are being forwarded to Florida, everybody, but not can't edit and forward around to everybody. Yeah, but just so everyone's aware of what, of what there is so they there before have, they get here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the second resolution packet. setter, share them with everybody, right. but floor will be the repository for them. Yeah, and I, and I think in order to be effective, it would be good, like we could say, you know, we talked about this three different, you know, environment, debt, and monitoring, and try to use those, those three to be more effective unless there's like a really big idea for something else and, and just a clarification. Resolutions are just Not things. Fine. Exactly. Yeah, they're just guidance, right? Mm -hmm. That this is how we want it. But by any means they don't mean that we have yeah. Yeah, signed something into legislature. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Everybody okay on that one? That's good. All right. So we move into our action agenda, four point one. Approve recommended policies starting on page 11. Um, the, the one that I, I think we had sort of um, highlighted was the student self-expression and distribution of literature. The others are essentially as described by Bill at our last meeting. Um, Jody, uh, do you have anything that you want to add on these? Since whenever I, policy is Jody. Right. Um, I think on page 11, there's a, just a reminder that when you do um, think about a possible work group, that there's a couple <coughs> that it was recommended that we have a work group to try to figure out how to um, meld together the variety of policies that we had across the district. So those aren't in here. Mm. 
I'm not sure what the highlight was on the self-expression other than that's a new required right. recommended a new required piece based one. on yeah, some stuff we, that happened. Yeah, we, because that was a new one to us, we ah. gave it a little bit more time. Okay, yeah. Most of these completely follow the recommended policies of the BSBA. Um, some of them take in some information that was specific to things that we've had to deal with in the past to make sure that that was covered. So oh, great, I have a question about the search and see for policy. Okay. Which is page 18. Uh, in um, section one, uh, subsection C, um, it, it reads, desks, lockers, textbooks, technological devices, and other materials or supplies loaned by the school to students remaining property of the school it may be opened by school employees for cleaning, maintenance, and emergencies. Pursuant to this policy, they may also be searched. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is that a broader uh, search then is contained otherwise um, because the other searches seem to be bound by only happening upon reasonable suspicion. Um, and so is C basically saying, we own it, we can search it no matter what, at any time? Is it Stevens not a yes? Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's that. Okay. I think the reasonable suspicion piece of that is personal problem as opposed to school, probably. Uh, correct. Um, okay, so then, then there seems to be, to be a little bit of a conflict between, or at least in, in uncertainty, maybe vagueness, of where the reasonable suspicion comes into play. And if it's only students' personal property, I think you should put that very clearly and say it's only personal property, um, because um, when you have A saying this policy applies to searches of students' persons, possessions, desks, lockers, and vehicles by school administrators or, or teachers, and then B says searches may be conducted only upon reasonable suspicion, it's going to say, okay, you know, you, you say identifying where searches can ha what searches can happen, and then say only on a reasonable suspicion, and then later saying, oh, but it doesn't, uh, it should be clear what it, the reasonable suspicion standard doesn't apply to in conducting the search. Mm -hmm. right. So it sounds um, like desks and lockers need to be taken out of A because they're okay, that's, in C. that's my point. Is that it's a little confusing because if you're saying lockers here, yep. Um, but and, and then I think we should have discussion whether or not we want reasonable suspicion for searching lockers and other things um, because and you know and, you know I know it's quandary because. You still have the property. It's like an employer. An employer can search a computer that is given over to um, an employee at any time because it's not them. It's not the perfect employee's personal possession anymore. Um, but I think it doesn't does, doesn't the the pursuant to this policy clause indicate that searches of school policy uh, searches of school property are pursuant to subsection B. You would think that, but then if you look at C, um, it, it carves out a pretty significant area, a lot of a lot of areas where students have things that right. basically say, well, it's like that. It, it says they can open them, mm -hmm. right? Not search them. Well, pursuant to this policy, no, they may no, also yeah. be searched. Right, but pursuant to the, I, isn't that referring to the policy? Uh, yes. in if, if it is, it should be clearer than this, um, because it's in this this. C paragraph, um, and do do we know what the intent is? What do we know what the original intent of of, of this was? Who drafted <coughs> this? And I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. What? So clarity is for me. Clarity is even better than something like this. Yeah. And when you have something like these can be searched, and it's just can be open and, and search, I just, it's not clear enough to me. So, um, and would Chris, would it, um, and, and I should actually address it to everybody, would it um, clarify if it was searches and then insert of students, persons, and possessions, maybe conducted only 
Maybe I think clarity would come in where you have reasonable suspicion for searches only applies to and then list the items that it applies to. You so, know, so, so it's clear that. How long have you been operating? For example, and I and I don't know. One example of a time when we've had to search every single locker mm -hmm. and throughout the entire building and the entire building was a uh, year when we had a bomb scare. Okay. Mm -hmm. so now and that, so, right. which fits under the emergency. Right. And we didn't know where it would come from, so we had to search everything. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're going to be going into someone's locker for no reason. Uh, the one locker that I remember we went into this year, it was because maintenance came and said there's something maybe growing in there. It's disgusting. <laughs> it smells bad. And the student probably hadn't been in the locker for two months, and their lunch had. So it was just removing that gross item. It wasn't I, really for us. I understand, but it's not, you know, it's, yeah. it's to protect against bad intention, not mm -hmm. good intention. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think clarity helps. Yeah. I think, uh, for me, I think taking the desks and lockers out of A mm -hmm. and putting and just having it in C, we don't need it in two places, makes sense. And that it is pretty much stating that they're for opening, and if the, there's a reasonable suspicion, we will also search. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that C is there to permit the school to do exactly what you did, looking through every locker and opening up to find, you know, the science experiment in there. It would seem it would seem simpler and just as clear to add to change that to say pursuant to the pursuant to the policy in 1B, they may also be searched. So, but so it's saying, it's saying if, we, if the school owns the stuff, the locker, computer, right. whatever it is, school can go in there and, and open it and look at it uh, for cleaning, maintenance, or emergencies. Mm -hmm. But if there's also reasonable suspicion, then they can be searched. Okay, that, I think that that's a broadening, which I think is a good thing. Okay. So, okay, um, Jonas, can you run that by again so that both Lisa and I can be clear on it? So I would, I would suggest, and, and not moving at this point, that we change the language in the last sentence of section one, subsection C, to pursuant to the policy outlined in Section one, subsection B, they may also be searched. So I do have one question. I'm not sure if it falls into this, but we have um, a software program go, called Go Guardian, mm -hmm. which alerts us if a student has done anything on their computer related to self harm or uh, explicit. explicit. Thank you. Um, so that makes us aware of mm -hmm. students using the school device in their school email to look at something they shouldn't or potentially make mm -hmm. a threat. Does that fall under this? Um, I think the, does the student sign a particular contract? When yes, they're acceptable use. So I think they can, they can waive it because they don't have to accept the device. Unless, right. unless it's Perfect. school policy, they have to accept the device. Okay. Um, that if you okay. have language in there that says, you know, by accepting this device, you're recognizing or waiving any. We do. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would cover that. Okay. And, and the Child Internet Protection Act right. requires right. us right. to do that monitoring. Right. Anyway. <coughs> okay. So do we have an amendment then that um, of the last sentence of policy C21 1C that would read, Pursuant to the policy outlined in 1B, comma, they may also be searched. Yeah, move that. I, I, I would like to move that. Okay. okay. I'll second. Jonas moves. Chris seconds. Um, any further discussion? And Jody, it's okay. You think it'll it'll yeah. fly? Yeah. Yes. Steve? Thank Can you. Can I ask a question now about it? So let's say the school owns the locker, yeah. and that there is a personal item in there. Do you can you search the backpack that's in the locker? If reasonable With reasonable suspicion. suspicion. So that's when we that's when we talk about reasonable suspicion. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. Do you have a question? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Did you decide to remove desks and lockers from the from No, that's, that's still there. Yeah, yeah, that's still there. The only change is that is to that last yeah. sentence of one C. Do you have that, Lisa? Yes. Can you see it? Yeah. Great. All right. Any further uh, discussion? Ready for a vote? All in favor of the amendment to change it to pursuant to the policy outlined in 1B, they may also be searched. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> None opposed? The amendment carries. Any other uh, concerns about any of the other policies? Are we ready for a vote on the other on the other recommended policies? Do we need a motion to approve the I think we do. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the recommended policies. Floor moves. Second. There are seconds. Good. Um, discussion. Do we review these every year or is this it? Is this the only review? I think you missed the meeting where we we are going to sunset these mm -hmm. by June thirtieth next year to force us mm -hmm. to, to revisit them revisit so we're not just yeah. rubber stamping these now okay, into perpetuity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we usually have like a policy committee to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and they can be brought up for review at any time. There's okay. not a not a timeline saying oh you can never do it for five years. Good. Yeah. All right. So um, ready for a vote then? Sure. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. So the policies, the recommended policies, are approved. Moving on to 4.2, authorizing the chair to sign letter of agreement for superintendent of record. We're going to have to go into executive session for this. Um, and um, I would, I mean, it, is, is there anyone among the administration who would like to be part of it? Because um, I'm not asking anybody to be part of it from among the administration. This could be just a board discussion. So, okay. And that can case, I, well, I, would just, I would just ask, what role would you want administration to play in this discussion? Um, uh, there is none that I have actually uh, designated in my mind. Okay. It would only be if I was missing something, well, which I very busy. often do. <laughs> okay. Louis? I don't know if you need me. I mean, oh, no, you no, you're good. Fine. You're good. I've put enough nights in. Yeah, you've put enough <laughs> nights in. I, I, I think, you know, um, from here on in, we could just, we could do this by ourselves. We, um, everybody who's here who isn't part of the executive session can, is welcome to Go home and enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> Scott, can I just can I just ask? Um, so so you're going to make a motion to go into executive session yes. for a personnel matter. For a person, it's a personal matter for the um, in order to um, basically examine the letter of agreement from the superintendent of record. I, okay. I and, would like to invite Jen and Kelly. It, it, they're welcome to be here if they want to be here, but only if you want to be here. Yeah? Sure. Okay. So everybody Great. missed the third page. Everybody missed the third page on this one. Oh, no. We all missed the third page? Oops. There's always a well, third page. Well, it's page eight, actually, and Chris would need to sign it all three, please. Thank you. Okay. okay, otherwise, everyone else, um, everyone else is excused. We'll come out of ex executive session in order to make the vote. And um, from that point on, um, Jonas, because you have honed your recording skills, uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just recording the results of the brain.